Well, for the length of this week, we have been talking about buildings. What better way to finish this week by reading a story of not the three little pigs, but a version called The Three Little Aliens and the Big Bad Robot. Robot. Yes, I said that. It's weird. But you're going to like it if you're a kid that likes the Three Little Pigs story. It's written by Margaret McNamara and Mark Fearing. I guess fear as in the world. And it has to do outer space. Because if you see these planets, that means it's not here on Earth. It's out in the universe. So, the three little aliens and the Big Bad Robot by Margaret McNamara. Let's see. Once there was a mama alien who had three little aliens. They were called Bork, Gork, and Mzzzik. Bork, Gork, and Mzzzik grew up in an old-fashioned house in a snug, cozy crater on a tiny little planet. As the eons passed their houses, got too crowded. And that means that they grew up. It's time for you to go out into the universe and find a planet of your own, their mama told them, giving each a hug. But remember, their mama told them, but remember, watch out for the big bad robot. It wants to chew you up. So Bork, Gork, and Zip took off. Bye, Mama, cried. They cried. Bye, kids, she shouted back. Always stick together, she added. Then she sniffed a little bit and called me every once in a while. And remember, that's what mamas do. They love you so much that when you leave, they're going to miss you. They're part of them and they're part of you. The three little aliens travel for and far and fast. There's a cute planet, said Bork. Too hot, said Mzz. How about that one? asked Gork. Too crowded, replied Mzz. They darted around a meteor. Are we there yet? asked Bork. It looks like they're getting tired. Just past the next bend, a big planet swirling with dust loomed into a view, the view. Bork spotted a shiny spare rover, space rover zipping around its mountain and plains. Awesome, she said. I'm going to live in that. Ma said to stick together, said Nzrzik. Do you think Bork made the right choice? Remember, Bork is the girl, alien. Do you think she made a good choice of leaving and staying here? Why? Or why not? But Bork had already zipped too far away to here. That leaves two of them together. Nuzik and Gork traveled on. Nuzik didn't like the look of the next planet either. Now here to breathe. Nowhere to breathe, I'm sorry. Nowhere to breathe, he gasped. P 
picky, picky, Gork said. Then, just ahead, he spied a giant planet with huge golden rings around it. And for those who know, this must be Saturn out of the planets, of course. He jumped on a passing satellite and caught a ride on a ring. Whee! He squealed. This is what I call home. We can't live on a ring that goes around in circles. Yelled Zzzz. We'll get dizzy. But Gork wasn't paying attention. Do you think Gork made the right dis the right choice? Why? Why not? Well, that leaves as the last one, all by himself. Now, Nuz was all alone. He traveled deeper and deeper into space until he spotted a massive blue planet. Far out in the galaxy, it had 13 moons and refreshing breezers. Oh, breezes, sorry. Refreshing breezes. This faraway planet is where I'll build my home, he said. I will be safe from the big bad robot. So look where he went. Hmm. To me, looking at all those moons, and it's blue, and I know a little bit about science, this must be either Neptune or Pluto. Yeah, the farthest ones. Z found everything he needed to make sturdy walls. He gathered stardust to keep his home bright and found solar panels to keep it warm. Then he grabbed a tall, shiny telescope. This'll do for a chimney, he said, though no one heard him because he's all by himself. Rock by rock and row by row, Nzik built the perfect house. He, When he was finished, he sat down and locked the door. His house was not very zippy or cool, but it was very safe, and there was room enough for all three little aliens. I hope they come to visit soon, said Nzik. What do you think about Nazik's house? Do you think he made the right choice? I personally like it. He used a lot of recycle and reuse materials. He didn't just make it out of nothing. He he wanted to make something special, right? Then one galactic dawn, there was a rumbling in the universe. Rick, Bob, Meep, Pildi, Deep, or Eep. Look at this robot. It was the big bad robot. And remember, he's going to go after somebody. Bork was so busy on her swirling red planet that she couldn't hear the robot's call. She didn't feel its giant footsteps as he leaped from star to star. And she didn't see the robot. That's how big he was. And if she was on the red planet, you know she was on Venus until it was right in front of her rover. Look, she saw him right there. Here goes the robot. 
Little alien, little alien. Beep. The robot. Pull over. Pull over. Not by the wheels of my trusty space rover, cried Bork bravely. <clears throat> then I'll crack and I'll smack and I'll whack your house down. Meep, the robot. She, he's already in her hands. Look at that. Look at that. The robot has <clears throat> her. And just like that, the robot cracked and smacked and whacked Bork's shiny rover into a hundred pieces. Greek, boink, greek, peet, leet, meet, deep, or eep, eep. As fast as he speed, as the speed of sound, Bork jetted, jetted away. The robot closed behind her. Just as the robot was about to eat her up, she spotted Gork's satellite house. Gork! Gork! Help me! She said. So there goes Bork. Here comes Gork. But Gork was having so much fun surfing on the rings of his giant planet that he didn't hear Bork, Bork's cries. He didn't see the robot chomping on comets and ripping open black holes until the big bad robot caught Gork's satellite in his huge metal claw. Look at that. He catched it. Little alien, little alien, he boinked, come out of hiding. Not by the orbit of this ring, I'm riding, cried Gork stout stoutly. Then I'll shatter and clatter and scatter your house down, like then the robot. And guess what? What he did to Gork is the same thing he did to Bork, okay? So, and before Gork could fly beneath the radar, that robot clattered and scattered and shattered Gork's satellite into a thousand pieces. Greek, oink, oink, really, deep, 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 meep. Gork barely escaped over here, called Bork. Stick together. At the speed of light, Bork and Gork blasted out into space with the big bat wolf, big bat robot, I'm sorry, getting closer all the time. Where can we hide, asked Gork. Let's find Z cried Bork. He'll know what to do. What do you think about the big bad robot so far? Look. That's a big destruction he's doing here. I mean, he looks scarier than, than the other one, than the big bad wolf. This had heard the robot's roar. He had seen what he was going on with his brother and sister through his telescope, and he was ready. He flashed his solar panels halfway across the universe. There he is, cried Bork and Gork, and they zoomed and to Nazik's house as fast as a hurling asteroid. Get inside, cried Nazik. No time to waste. Oh, my goodness. This is scary, right? And my, mind you, we're in October. No sooner had Bork and Gork slammed the solid space rock door than they heard the robot rumbling. Alien, little... Little alien, little alien, he quirked. Let me come in. And remember, he built the house. Not by the slime... On my chinny chin chin, cried Z. Then I'll smack and I'll crack and I'll whack your house down. Zip the robot. 
You can see Bork and Gork are very frightened. And the Zook is just, uh-uh. You ain't destroying my house. So let's see what's going to happen. The big bad robot bashed and crashed the Zook strong solid house. Nothing happened. Then it pounded and smashed really hard. Not a crack. Then he loaded up a triple blaster and zapped that house. But good, that house would not fall down. So the robot forced its way into the alien's house right down the chimney, which is happening to be the telescope. The aliens covered their ears and waited for the robot to chomp them down. And something's going to happen to the robot. But halfway down the telescope, that robot got stuck tight. It strained and it struggled. It moaned and it groaned. The house shook and shuddered, but it but did it fall down? It did not. The robot gave one more mighty cry and burst into millions of pieces. Cool, said Bork. Awesome, said Gork. Just as I planned. Zick. There's just one thing missing, said Bork. Wow. The robot broke into millions of pieces. What happened to the big bad robot? Phone home, said Gork. So Nazik did. Ma, he said, we have the coziest house in the galaxy. Won't you come over and tuck us in? And what did Mom do? She went there to tuck them all in. And she did. The end. Wow. That big bad robot. I'll see you next week.